We previously looked at ng-bind and how we were able to bind data to the view. This kind of binding is actually called one-way binding in Angular. It's basically the direction of binding goes from the data to the view. It goes one way. But the other cool feature of Angular is you can actually do two-way data binding. So let's think about what the two-way data binding would mean. In a traditional server-side application, when you have to send data from the client to the server, for instance, you have the user fill a form or you know fill a text box or something like that, and you want to send the value of that text box to the server, what you would need to do is an HTTP request because the application is on the client side and your server-side application is running on a completely different machine. So there has to be this request from the client's browser to your server where the data that the user entered in the text box is transferred to the server. In the case of an Angular application where everything is happening on the client side, there is no such need. There's no server-to-server -server transfer. Well, there is, of course, some kind of a server-to-server -server transfer that needs to happen when you want to persist the data. But if you are messing around with data on the client's browser, you can actually send data from the view to the controller. Here, what we have done is from the controller to the view. We updated in the controller and we accessed it in the view. Now, how about the other way around? The user enters some data in the view. You want to update it in the controller. You want to get that value in the controller. Well, that can be done, and that's two-way data binding. I'm going to demonstrate that by having some kind of a user input. I want to enter, I want to have the user enter some value, and the simplest way to have the user enter anything is by adding a text box. So I'm going to add a text box over here. Uh, I'm going to use the input tag. I'll say type equals text, even though that's not really required. It's the default. And I'm going to close the input tag. And uh, let's say I have a caption here. Please enter your name. Now, I refresh the page. Well, now I have a text box with a caption. Now, this text box doesn't do anything. I can type in stuff here and nothing happens. What I want to do is get the user's input in this text box. And whatever the user types, I want to update the scope. It's basically the reverse of what we did earlier. Earlier, we updated the scope object in the, in the controller, and we displayed it in the view. Now we want to do it the other way around. We want to update the view. Uh, when the user updates the view, when the user types in something, we want to update the scope object. So let's say I have a scope uh, variable called username, right? So let's say I have this. I'm going to do dollar scope dot username. This is my variable that I want to have to match the value that the user enters in the text box. Now I want to say, hey, Angular, whenever the user types in something over here, update scope dot username with that value. The way to do this is, you guessed it, another directive. And the name of the directive is called ng-model. ng-model takes in an expression, which is the scope expression. In this case, it's user name. I'm not doing scope.username again. Remember, anything you do in the HTML is automatically uh, prefixed with a scope dot. So when you just say username, Angular knows you're referring to scope.username. OK, so now I have the username string referred to in ng-model. And this is actually all that we need to tell Angular to say, hey, when the user enters something in this text box, just bind it to username. But this one's the reverse binding, right? It's going the other way. It's going from the view, from the text box, to the model object, which is the which is on the scope. Now I say I refresh this and then type in something. Well, I can tell you that Angular is doing this thing. Angular is updating it and it's binding it, but it's hard to tell because you're not really using it anywhere else. So in order to verify that Angular is doing this, first I'm gonna have a paragraph tag, your name is, and then just like a bound time string, I'm gonna bind username. And uh, now, see the magic happened. Right now, there is nothing in the username because it was just initialized with an empty string. Now, let's say I start typing over here. You notice what's happening. The value in this uh, Angular expression is automatically being updated as I do a key press, right? The minute I press a key, it's actually getting updated. So this value is being bound on each key press. That's the first thing. The second thing is, we already learned that when the scope object gets updated, 
the view automatically gets updated. So this is also happening, right? Just like we updated the time string and the time string got displayed, the username updated and the username gets up, you know, displayed in the in the view. And this is all happening thanks to Angular watching for these changes and automatically updating the view. And of course, this is uh, the model, ng model, which is watching any key presses and automatically updating the model. When Angular started getting popular, this was kind of like the demo which people showed to kind of showcase what Angular could do. And this is actually a little bit tricky to implement in jQuery. It's not as simple as just putting a couple of directives here, but we were able to do this in Angular with very little effort. Uh, if you look at some of the Angular tutorials, they kind of start off over here and you won't really know what's happening. But uh, if you've been following along this course, you kind of know what the scope is and you kind of know what data binding is. Now, hopefully you will be able to appreciate what's happening here and how this thing works. So uh, this is two-way data binding in Angular. Uh, we'll be doing this a lot when you're uh, you know, building a web application using Angular. And this is kind of fundamental to how Angular separates the view from the model. You just have to hook in these connectors between the view and the model, and then Angular takes care of updating one when the other updates. So this is very handy when you wanna have that separation of concerns.